now. Let's turn to Andre Gillespie, professor of political science at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, of course, uh, a very important swing state in this year's presidential election. Professor Gillespie, good to have you back on. I want to talk with Peach Say in just a minute. Um, but first, I want to get your impressions uh, on last night's interview with Vice President Harris on Fox. How important do you think these sit-down interviews are for her now, especially in these final weeks before the election? Well, I don't have any inside knowledge of what's going on in terms of Vice President Harris's strategy, but I suspect that she has ramped up her interviews so that they hit at a time when voters are actually paying attention to what's going on. She certainly garnered a lot of criticism in the past month, six weeks, about not doing interviews, but maybe uh, the idea was to wait until the final weeks of the election when people would be at peak attention um, and she would get a lot of earned media for these interviews, not just for the time that she's actually on camera camera with the reporter, but then also the analysis that takes place afterwards where they uh, di uh, dilute everything into sound bites and then also regurgitate what had happened um, in some of these interviews. Yeah. And what did you think of last night's interview? Your thoughts? It was combative on both sides. Um, and, and, and so uh, it seemed like Vice President Harris uh, was prepared for a fight. Uh, Brett Bayer came in right out of the gate. Uh, with a question that seemed to me to be setting up to another gotcha question on immigration. Um, he certainly provided the type of red meat questions that a Fox News audience would want um, one of their reporters to ask um, of a presidential candidate. Um, and Vice President uh, Harris uh, responded uh, very uh, vigorously in many instances. And so I don't think that many people were persuaded by uh, the interview. So I don't think that a typical Fox News voter was going to be persuaded to not vote for Donald Trump because of that interview. Uh, but I think that uh, Democrats were energized by uh, the fact that, that 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 Kamala Harris stood up to Brett Baer, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, inserted herself, tried not to let him talk over her and other kinds of things. So I think uh, that, that that people got what they wanted to see out of it. Um, and I think that she fulfilled her purpose by showing up on what could be perceived as a hostile news network and holding her own. I want to talk about Georgia now. Uh, former President Trump did a town hall uh, with Harris Faulkner speaking of fo uh, Fox News uh, in your state this week. It was specifically geared towards women. I want to talk about that, Professor. How important is the female vote in this race and any indication how women voters in Georgia may be leaning? Well, um, women tend to vote at slightly higher rates than men. Um, in particular, and when we're looking at communities of color, that gets amplified even more, particularly amongst African-American um, women. So um, for black women in particular, if they turn out at low rates, even if they vote overwhelmingly for Kamala Harris, it's going to jeopardize her chances of being able to win um, the state of Georgia. Keep in mind that uh, Democrats are still outnumbered in the state of Georgia, so they win because of a compromised Republican candidate and superior turnout. And so it becomes a question as to whether or not Georgia voters think Donald Trump is as compromised now as he was in 2020, um, and whether or not uh, Democrats can actually get people to turn out to vote. Yeah, almost out of time here. Quickly, uh, I know the early voting is underway in Georgia, and Georgia state officials um, said on the first day of early voting that a record 328,000 ballots were cast. What are you seeing there on the ground? So um, as of yesterday, there's a website that keeps track of this. There have been over 600,000 votes cast. Uh, there were about 5 million cast um, in Georgia during the 2020 cycle. So this suggests that perhaps about 10 percent of Georgia voters or more have already cast their ballots. Um, I know from a polling that my own research center has done that people who participate in early voting do so because it's convenient um, and that this is also a reflection that many voters have made up their minds already and they don't need the next three weeks uh, to wait for any October surprises to make up their mind about who they're going to vote for. They known for a long time who they're supporting. So it's just a question of can the campaigns get these people to turn out to vote? Whichever one does the best job is going to be the one that wins. Okay, Professor Gillespie, always good to be with you. Thank you so much for your input. Thank you.